What's up, what it do, man? It's your boy, Dev the Gamer, a.k.a. Player One and God himself, and welcome to another episode of The Gamers Den. If this is your first time here, this is the show where I go over video game news, tech news, and a little bit of everything else. And we start this thing off with a thing called Level One News. So before we get into Level One News, shout out to everybody who tapped in and listening to the show. If you are on the visual platform, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more content. And if you're on the audio form, the visual form is available on Rumble and Hideout. Those links are in the description as well and on any of my socials. If you click the link in the bio and you click everything Dev the Gamer, you will have the option to listen and or watch the gamers then. And vice versa for everybody who just strictly watches on the visual side of things so if you want to listen and tap in on the audio you're busy you got something to do there you go same thing uh, click that same link and then you just go to listen to the gamers Den. that page will take you to the rss page where this podcast is initially uploaded and where you could directly donate and or monetarily support the show if that's what you're into and if that's how you like to show your thanks and your uh, appreciation and all of that for the things that you like and not only that but we are also available on apple Podcasts, spotify google Podcasts, samsung Podcasts, and pretty much everywhere else i can possibly put this show <laughs> with that being said uh we do have some things to get into with level one news um level one news man what do I, it's really, we, something that was level two news in previous episodes is going to be level one news because I already told y'all what it was and that's going to be the Bayonetta story. So actually let's just go ahead and jump into that right now. As far as level one news is concerned, let me make sure this is, uh, this is pulled up here before I even get this going and get this done. All right. Make sure I'm screened up. All right. I'm screened up. Headline reads. Sources dispute Bayonetta voice actors claims overpay offer. Now, I told y'all in the last episode, whether y'all wanted to agree with it or not, it's just the reality of the matter is most of the businesses in theory craft, because we all know, well, it really ain't theory craft. It's just a fact. Um, the fact of the matter is some of these businesses, corporations and companies and people, no matter who they identify as, what they are, they operate a certain way. And based on the person, it may or may not be immoral. And sometimes it's just across the board immoral. And that's what she claimed that what they offered to pay her was. So we going to get into it, right? Now, I got to scroll down, of course. I have to scroll down because we already know what she said, right? So we don't need to rehash that. So if this thing will stop messing up. See, everybody on the audio, y'all can't see this thing messing up. Yeah, see, look, look, we getting that page, and it's unresponsive. We getting that again. But um, here we are right here. Here's the update for everybody in the visual form. This is the update right here, and I'm going to read it. However, sources cited in a report have now disputed some of the claims made by the voice actor, many of which can corroborate their own or via the, the article places I'm reading this, they can corroborate via their own sources. So apparently these sources may or may not be credible. It's being reported that they're credible sources. Continuing on in the article here. Oh, and if y'all hear like some type of metronome tick tock ticky tock thing, I, I got a new uh I got a new uh pendulum swinger thing. I got a new pendulum swinger thing. That's what I'm gonna call it. I know y'all like what pendulum swinger thing? What is a pendulum swinger thing, bruh? You a grown man. How you sitting here saying pendulum swinger thing? Hold up. Because that's what it's called, bro. <laughs> it's a pendulum swinger thing. But continuing on in the article here. According to people with knowledge of the situation, as well as documentation reviewed by publications, Platinum intended to rehire the voice actor last summer. It's claimed that Platinum sought to hire Taylor. Well, that's her name, her last name, Taylor, for, quote unquote, at least five sessions with each paying three to four thousand for four hours in the studio. 
This will have brought Taylor's total fee to $15,000, according to reports. And as these publications can corroborate via their own sources, one person with knowledge of the deal claimed to the publication, this represented a significant increase on Taylor's fee for the second game. Now, here we go, man. Here we go. Right? Here we go. So what's the scenario? Hold up. Once again, you will get no pushback from me when it comes to she shouldn't have been paid all that in contrast to the total amount that the franchise have made, if it really made that, right? I don't really know these numbers, and I didn't even do research on it, right? But at the same time, no matter what I said, like I previously said, the fact of the matter is, if whatever Platinum in or, or Nintendo or whoever, if whatever they did was legal, why are you bringing this up and why are you making it an issue? There's nothing you can do. Even if it is immoral, there's nothing you can do. Where she's wrong at is playing, is trying to get sympathy from everybody, right? She's wrong for trying to get sympathy from people and wanting people to feel sorry for her and boycott the game. Because nowadays, everybody goes to social media for their issues instead of, instead of the proper avenues and channels. And in some cases, the authorities for their issues, which I will never understand. But that's besides the point. She claimed that she was getting underpaid. Now, how are you getting underpaid? And you are going to get paid upwards of $20,000, $15,000 for your total, for your total and all your work. Now, I, I, I really want to know what the issue is. Like, can somebody do an interview with her? Well, hey, 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 look, um, I forgot your name already. <laughs> that, that's how bad I am with names. I forgot your name already. Hold up. But I think your last name was Taylor. So, um, Miss Taylor. Ah, uh, man. Miss Taylor, feel free to contact me, man, or I may contact you if we could and I and I can interview or something, because I would really like to understand what the true discrepancy is with um with you and Platinum Games. So Maybe so for everybody listening, I may or may not reach out to her and stuff like that and see what's going on to see if she's willing to come on to the show, because this show is worldwide. You know, I I do look at my analytics and everything, you know what I'm saying? And the show is worldwide. You know, we got listeners from all over the world. So first and foremost, shout out to everybody around the world. Shout out to y'all. You know, we got people from listening all the way from America to South America to, to the EU and everywhere africa so shout out to the world shout out to everybody first and foremost shout out to y'all right appreciate y'all for listening to me with this jibber jabber and this jargon <laughs> i appreciate that i really do but you know you know miss I would, I would i would sit down with you i'll let you speak your piece and everything so if you hear this clip or if you see this or you listen to the show and they come across your table and your desk understand that you know i'm not going to demonize you and condemn you as if you are the all end all be all to being wrong no it's just i i need some clarification and clarity on what exactly is going on with you and platinum games to where you had to make such a debacle about things because if what they did was legal then this is no story and you more or less don't have a case because you've already acknowledged this this is the same reason why i've i haven't been reporting on the uh, Activision Blizzard deal as much anymore. I know some of y'all been wondering about that. And that's only because, well, once you go to the tweet and you learn that them over there, them good people over there at Xbox agreed to the, to the terms and conditions that Sony put on the table, there's no point in get for fan people, fan boys or fan girls to get mad at Sony for Xbox agreeing to something. Like, you can't get mad that you agreed to the terms and services. Like, where they do that at? Like, you just can't get mad, right? Like, hold on, man. Hold on. Hold up. Like, you just can't get mad at these type of things. Hold up. 
Like you can't get mad if you agree to the terms and services. It was trending all over Twitter that what? Oh, Xbox, Sony put it, had a clause in the deal to where they can't upload or put nothing on the game pass and do all this, that, and the third. But if you go to months ago on the man's Twitter, on his Twitter, yeah, I said Twitter, yes, the Twitter, the man agreed, they agreed. So there is no way in hell that you sit here and accept the terms and conditions and then get mad when you bought to buy the acquisition. But like if you know business, you know that pre-existing contracts that have been signed, dated and stamped in a, and made official have to play out. They have to play out unless you're going to suffer the consequences of the clause that you do and do not know that are there. Now, the whole and that's the and that's the whole thing, you know, and that's the whole thing. So that's why I haven't been talking about the Microsoft, Sony, by the whole the whole deal, because in my opinion, at the end of the day, it's still bad for gamers. As far as consoles go, majority of the Call of Duty player base is on PlayStation. I don't think Xbox is going to transfer that over. And then we talking about Game Pass. Game Pass ain't all that cracked up to be. And that's all I've been saying, just in my own personal opinion. It's really not all that cracked up to be. And when we talking about cloud gaming and just streaming games, yeah, Stadia was the best one. And then number two until Stadia is officially up out of here is GeForce Now. And then number three can be Amazon Luna. Number four, whoever else. <laughs> right? So when it's all said and done, you got to understand that, once again, you just cannot get mad that you accepted the terms and conditions that somebody put on the table and put up in comparison or up for collateral or whatever it is. So if y'all signed the contract before the Activision Blizzard deal, Microsoft, and y'all already signed and said it was cool that whatever, whatever. Hey, man, what what? it ain't nothing I could tell you. It ain't nothing I could tell you, man. It's nothing nobody can do. You accepted it. So accept defeat. Accept defeat. Once you get Activision Blizzard, accept defeat. Make Call of Duty exclusive to the Xbox. You can't put it on Game Pass or whatever the clause said. And, um, yeah, just accept defeat. Because <laughs> Call of Duty ain't going to help the player base, and neither is Game Pass. So, I have no stake in this fight. That's just my personal opinion. And if any Xbox fanboy, Microsoft fanboy, want to sit here and be like, Oh, you're just... You're want to start crying and scrunching up your face at me and all that listen this is where you can go listen kid i think you'd be more comfortable over at that place weenie hut juniors are you saying i belong at weenie hut juniors uh, oh no sorry i was actually pointing to the place next to it super weenie hut juniors yeah you could take yo you could take yourself to weenie hut junior bro take yourself to super weenie hut junior on top of that Super weenie hut. You super weenie. Use a super weenie. Ooh, I'm about to get that. I'm about to get that clip too. Ooh, I'm about to get that clip too. Don't relieve me. I'm a weenie. Uh, uh, uh. Oh man, I'm about to kill you boys. I'm about to kill. Oh, I'm killing the game. I am killing the game. They don't know. They don't know. They don't. Ooh, RIPX. Man, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. RP DMX. Okay, man, let's get into the next thing in uh level one news. All right, let's make sure I'm screened up. All right, I'm screened up. Headline reads Sometimes it's okay to cheat in video games. Yes, you heard that headline right. And I'll read it again for the blind people in the back with the hearing aid. Sometimes it's okay to cheat in video games. Hold up. Hey. No, it ain't. <laughs> like, it's no point in cheating. But, okay, realistically, it depends on what type of game we play. If we playing Grand Theft Auto, I mean, cheats is kind of what the game is built on. If you even look at GTA 5, I mean, everybody that modded the game to hell. You know what I'm saying? Excuse the language for the sensitive ears. But everybody that modded the game to live in hell. So, and it's normal. Because that's what GTA, Grand Theft Auto, always had. It has had the cheat the cheat way, the way of the cheat, the way of the cheater in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, to this day, 
everybody who really played Grand Theft Auto, you at least know by heart one cheat code. So if all else was failed and you had to play GTA with one cheat code, you know what it is by heart because you didn't put in that one cheat code so much, you know what it is. And for me, I know what mine is, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, it's just, that's just what it is. So we're going to get into this article and uh, see what's been going on, man, because I don't think um, cheating is the answer whatsoever. I, I really don't. But the funny thing is, I'm skimming through this article, and they're talking about God of War. <laughs> they're talking about God of War and nothing about cheating. Unless somebody cheating in God of War. So, I'm completely lost, and I'm just skimming through this. I just skimmed through it real quick just to try and find it. So, we about to read this and go through it, right? And see what they mean by it's okay to cheat in video games. Because if you cheating in a story game... If you cheating in a one player game, you trash. I I just I'm telling you right now, you trash. If you cheating in a one player game, you trash. Like you gotta be some type of garbage. It's one thing if you just get frustrated, you can't beat the boards, you get off the game and you come back to it tomorrow. Hey, you might beat it tomorrow. But if you sit there and be like, all right, no, I gotta cheat, then you trash. If you got the guidebook, if you got the guidebook, guess what? You you good, bro. Like you you not cheating. You like I come up from having to go get the guidebook, not watching YouTube videos. You know what I'm saying? Like when YouTube was out, it was cool and everything, but at the same time, the guidebook was still was the go-to if you didn't have a cheat code like I mentioned previously like Grand Theft Auto. So, you you would go so usually when I would go to the store if I could, I would look for the game I wanted. Okay, I want this game then because um, how the owl was at this specific store I'm talking about, the books were actually right across from the case where the video games were. So I would just wa I'd walk in the store, look, look at the games. Okay, I found the game. And then I would just turn around, hold 180, turn around, and then just start skimming the books, skimming the magazines. Okay, y'all got the Zelda guidebook, the Final Fantasy guidebook. Y'all got this one, this one. Up oh, there it is. Boop. You know, it get to moving on. But like I said, let's get into the article. Fans have been anticipating God of War Ragnarok since the release of the last game of the franchise. God of War landed on consoles in 2018. There's good reason for this. It's fun, and everyone wants to visit Grumpy Kratos and his band of friends again. Without question, I am one of those fans. There's just one problem. I never finished God of War. Okay, so whoever wrote this, they never finished God of War. And, um... I don't... So, I don't know, man. Y'all going to have to start having these conversations with your friends or something. Like, modding is one thing, right? Like, modding and cheating, it's, it's almost a thin line between modding and cheating. But we about to get into this article some more. For a lot of people, this might not be an issue. If you're screaming, just dive in and experience the new one at your screen right now, I get it. But the God of War series is nuanced. There are many ins and outs when it comes to its characters, world, and lore. Playing without knowing all of them can lead to serious FOMO when a joyful character reunion or side plot doesn't hit the way it should, which is a fact. That's a fact. And this is why I say and champion single player games and story based games more so than just games that focus on pure gameplay and mechanics. Because, okay, cool, I can play Call of Duty and shoot somebody all day. Woo, ooh, yay, I got a kill streak. Ooh, I didn't did this 600 times in a row, yay. It's not like I'm in the tournament or something, you know what I'm saying? If I'm in the tournament, all right, cool. But if if I know I play at a high level or I'm high ranking, you know, back, back uh, I can't talk for whatever reason. Back in the Black Ops 2 days, you know, once you hit Master Prestige, you hit the Prestige, okay, yeah, you pretty much, you stamped. You know, but nonetheless, let's keep going. Yes, I could pick up where I left off, but it's quite difficult and full of complicated controls. I don't remember. And the reason I stepped away from it in the first place, there was a boss I couldn't beat and wouldn't be able it wouldn't be able to without some serious equipment upgrades. Improvements I couldn't get without winning the battle. It was a vicious cycle that I didn't see any way out of. Basically, I got stuck and I didn't have a lot of interest in going back. What did I just say? What did I just say? I just said, I just said this. It's one, like if you might, that this is going to happen. You're going to play a game. 
you're going to get stuck. That is fine. Me, I'm the type of person that don't know how to quit. So when I come across an obstacle or something that seems or something that would quote unquote seem impossible, I don't think it is. I chop that word up and I'd be like, no, I'm possible and I am going to pass this no matter how many times because I, I give up I give up this sauce right here right I give up this sauce for y'all on how I when I get to these impasses uh, let me tell y'all how I do these right so I be playing a game like God of War or something and I come to an impasse boom I hit a boss I hit a puzzle I hit a something all right I start looking at the game from a pattern perspective a mechanic perspective just from a whole different perspective than what I'm just usually doing, right? So usually you having fun with the game and then you like half fun, half serious. Then it's like, okay, I'm no longer fun. I'm full serious. Okay, let me time this. So you're going to swing. All right, hold on. Let me fight you again. Okay, what did I do the first time? All right, I'm going to do that. Okay, okay. Now I see what you, okay, you did that. Let me do this like three more times. Like I will lose on purpose. I would lose on purpose just to map down the pattern and or what the boss is going to do once their health gets so low. So you take a quarter of their health. OK, they start to do one thing. You take another quarter of their health. They start to do another thing. You take another quarter of their health. They start to do so on and so forth until they did. And it's just like, OK, OK, cool. I'm under leveled, but I got this. I got these items. I got this. I got this. I got that. Maybe if I poison you, do this, dodge, dodge, hit you, dodge, dodge, hit you, dodge, dodge, hit you. Okay, you become, the poison wears off of you, but I can get a quarter of your health down with one poison. So I poison you again. I do this about three, four times, and I keep dodging and moving. Let's see if that works. Okay, this only got me so far. Let me try something else. And that's and, that, and just sequences like that, because I am the God himself and also the God of sequence. This is just what it is. So... It's cool, but let's move on to the article here. My solution, cheating. Oh, oh man. Hold up. Oh, man. Who who wrote this? I got to call you out, bro. I got to call you out, whoever this is. Who, who wrote this? Who wrote this article? I got to call you out. Oh, uh, it might be a woman. Oh, I got to call you out. I got to call you out. Swampna Krishna. Look, I don't, I don't like saying names. I don't like saying names. I'll be reading these articles. Y'all know me. I'll call people out if, they, if the article was read all faulty and whatnot. But we talking about a single player game. You cheating and got a war? Oh, no. Nah. And my love. My love. I'm pretty sure you a cool person. I'm 100% sure that you are a cool person out here. Everybody that listens to this show is a cool person. But um, you're cheating in God of War, ma'am. And or male. I don't know. Swampna could be a, a unisex name. So whoever you are, this is where I need you to go. Listen, kid. I think you'd be more comfortable over at that place. Weenie Hut Juniors. Are you saying I belong at Weenie Hut Juniors? Uh, oh, no. Sorry. I was actually pointing to the place next to it. Super Weenie Hut Juniors. Put the controller down and take yourself to Super Mega Weenie Hut Junior. You're cheating in God of War. Like, you gots to be kidding me, bruh. Let's continue on here. My solution? Cheating. Okay, not cheating exactly. This isn't a full-throated well um yeah this this just uh this just changed real quick hold up full throated this just changed real quick this isn't a full throated defense of cheat codes or hacks rather i'm just going to fire up some god of war youtube playthroughs and not feel guilty about it okay okay nah this this article is some bait this some bait that's not even cheating. <laughs> like, that's not cheating. Like, okay, all right, let, all right. I'm glad we're having this conversation, though, because it brings up a good point. What is cheating today? What is cheating in video games today? That's what we got to figure out. What is cheating in video games today? So, in my opinion, right, 
Cheats, well, look, we got to talk about cheats and themselves. So cheats back in the day used to be, you know, the the pattern or the code of buttons or the sequence of buttons you would have to press, right? And then, all right, you activate something hidden in the game or you are now allowed access and or you get items and things of that nature. Oh, whoa. Oh, uh, some stuff started popping off in my headphones. So anyway, as I was saying, you know, like I was saying earlier at the beginning, cheat codes, GTA, stuff like that. Like if you had the game guide, like say you got the Final Fantasy 13 game guide, right? That's not cheating. You need the guide. You know where the secret stuff is at, the hidden stuff. Like, it's not cheating if the developers and the creators of the people give you a whole book. That's not cheating. Is it cheating if you go online to YouTube and you search up the walkthrough gameplay of a game because you're stuck somewhere? No. And here's why I say it's not. From personal experience, I've been stuck on games before. Like, um, ooh, prime example. Dante's Inferno. I got stuck on a part. I, I just didn't know where to go. And I was reading it for like a hot, hot minute. I was like, yo, what's what's going on? I'm not blind here. I mean, I, I am kind of blind, but I can still see. So I'm probably I probably won't get glasses till I'm like in my 40s. And then that's when I'm really going to be blind. So but uh, nonetheless, I was like, you know, what? I got to go on YouTube. Dante's Inferno, whatever, whatever, level board, whatever, right? It popped up. I was like, oh, that's what I got to do. Like, in my in my experience with my level of gaming, a lot of times when I get stuck on a game or in a game, or hell, both, um, I just usually get stuck on stupid shit. Like, I don't realize I have to grab the ledge in that I'm not doing an extra jump somewhere in the, in the sequence. And I'm not realizing I got to turn the camera left or right. That way I can see myself jump on the other ledge or whatever the case. Like it's real small stuff like that for me personally. But once again, this person came up on a battle, a boss or a, a tough opponent. Excuse me. And they couldn't beat it. Now, if that was me, I would have just did what? Okay. Okay. Uh, let me time you. If I got to chip your, chip away at your health, I chip away at your health. So if the fight usually take maybe five or 10 minutes, hell, even less than that, I'll take the extra time just to beat you. Cause once I beat you, I'm gonna get a gang of experience. I'm gonna get a boatload of experience points. I'm gonna get new weapons. I'm gonna get materials. I'm gonna get items. And then from that point on, especially if I'm playing an open world game and I'm free to go where I wish and do what I want, I'm going to go to the nearest blacksmith i'm going to go to the nearest crafter craft table i'm going to do anything and everything i need to do from that point on to upgrade my current character so upgrade my armor upgrade my weapons get more items get more everything do some side quests explore just get more items and get more experience and try and level up two to three levels ahead of myself or ahead of what i think would be ahead so if I'm fighting a boss or an enemy and they're level 17 and I'm level 15 and I'm having issues, hell, even level 14 and I'm having issues, I'm going to train up from level 14 to level 20 if possible. So if this takes me a day or two, it takes me a day or two. But now when I come, when I progress, when I progress into the story, what's going to happen is I'm not going to have these issues. I'm going to just be blowing through everybody. I'm going to just be blowing through everybody looking at it and nothing. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just going to be blowing through, just blowing through the whole game like it ain't nothing until I come across a boss. And then it's like, okay, challenge accepted. And then you start boxing. But that's not cheating. Now, is modding cheating? Yes. And I know y'all don't like to hear it. I know y'all like, oh, I was with you, bro. I know y'all like, oh, bro, I was with you. I was with you until you said modding was cheating. Hold up. Hey. Oh, bro, I was with you. I was with you. Listen, I'm going to tell the truth and nothing but the truth unless I'm in court. Listen, modding is cheating. I don't respect people who cheat in certain types of games, but modding is cheating. 
right? So let's take Grand Theft Auto, for example. Cheat codes, games like Grand Theft Auto are where cheating gets real vague and it gets, you know, it starts to look like dog water, right? Because it's like, all right, I could put in the cheat code, get all the money, get all the armor, get all the health, get all the money, get all the guns. That's fine. But once you start modding the game, you start getting into the files of the game, you start changing and, and tampering with the source code and the, you know what I'm saying, in the code of the game, you start putting things in the game that never existed. You start doing all of that. I'm just like, I'm cool, bro. I'm cool. Like once you start turning characters invisible and flying through through walls and all that, like you start killing people in their apartments and you can't even do that. It's it's crazy, bro. No, bro. Like like that's just unnecessary. It's highly unnecessary. It's already an open world game and you can already do the craziest stuff. Why not just do it legit? I don't understand, but but see that's the beauty of video games. You get to do things in the world that doesn't have real world consequences. So I understand it. I just don't agree with it. Right. Now, let's take games like Call of Duty. If you cheat in Call of Duty, I don't respect it. And you trash like you disre disrespectfully. I'm going to say that you trash like, like you just whole trash. If you cheat in that Call of Duty. You cheating at Call of Duty, you cheating in PUBG, you cheating at Apex, you cheating in Valorant, you cheating in uh, 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 Counter-Strike, you, you, you cheating in everything, you cheating in League of Legends, you cheating on everything. Why are you cheating, bro? Just get your skills up. Just get your skills up or casually play or get with a team and some people that can carry you and you can just play a role and you be a role player. Be the healer, be the support debuffer something if you can't you can't deal out no heavy damage just just play the background just play the back but see this is where like i said we live in a day and cheating in itself in video games like i said where people are doing this in the world in a world where real world co consequences do not apply so yes and i even said this in the uh new PUBG review video that i did that y'all can go watch right now People cheat for self-validation. So these are people, you got to understand, people who cheat aren't good at the game. People who cheat never probably was ever good at the game. They probably didn't got smacked on and whooped on so hard. They like, oh man, uh, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. I'm going to go ahead and, and cheat. I'm going to just mind my game and break my game and hack my system and do all this, do all that. Y'all And y'all know what I'm talking about when it comes to Call of Duty. That people having boxes and can shoot you through walls and all like like bro, you cheating, you cheating like bro, you know cheating is bad when the when a when they cheating in chess. What dude has something in his booty cheeks? I don't know, bro. I I don't know, bro. All I know is they was talking about the chess master dude got caught cheating. He had a booty plug, butt plug in or something. He had a butt plug in and it vibrate every time, dude. I don't know, bro. Hold up. But what I do know is they even cheating in chess now. Like, if you got to cheat, bro, you just trash. Let's just say that. See, as a competitor, as a person, you got to understand this. Accept defeat, but, like, you got to understand when to accept defeat. Like, it's a, it's a lot of lawn chair action going on these days. And cheating is just basically another form of lawn chair action. If you don't know what lawn chair action mean when I say that phrase, it just means folding. Like, people just folding. It's been a lot of folding going on. So, you got to understand something. I, I I will never stand by cheating based on the game. Not just in general as a genre or just the whole topic of discussion. No. Because I might cheat based on a certain game. If the game ain't all that serious. If I'm playing Sims, hey, Sims got some cheats. I, how, like, how do I get five houses and three bitches? <laughs> Hold up. like how i do that how i do that <laughs> excuse the language for the sensitive ears but i'm just saying bro like if you cheating in certain in some games bro you just trash if you cheat in the single player games you trash this person was cheating in god of war they said i'm cheating 
by watching the gameplay videos in the walkthrough gameplays on YouTube. No, that's called you stuck at the game. Well, you suck at the game. You got stuck on the game. You you not hard headed like me. And you just said, you know what? Instead of stressing out and banging my head up against the wall, I'm going to just go to handy YouTube and see what everybody else did. And then you're going, oh, I need to do that. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, because you want to know what happened? Somebody did the hard work for you. Us content creators banged our head up on the walls, bet, played the video game, just went bam, 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 finally beat it. Or we took our time and or we just did what we were supposed to do, crafted the right items. Because everybody don't play the game, especially single player story games. Everybody don't play them the same way. So I might do a playthrough in a run where like prime example, if me and one of y'all listening were, were to play Final Fantasy 12, the Zodiac Age, right? Our teams would not be the same. By the time we get to the end of the game and we got to fight Larsa's brother, right? We going to have two sets of different people like yo Vaughn is not going to be set up the same as mine. Yo, bought the year is not going to be set up the same as mine. Your friend not going to be set up the same. Your Bosch not going to be the same. Pinello not going to be the same. Ash ain't going to be the same. It's just not <laughs> like it's just not going to be the same. So understand that if you got to cheat or if you consider going to YouTube cheating, that's not cheating. That's just called you need help and assistance. And that's what it's there for. People who can do it and kind of do it you know more frequently you know snap 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 you know what i'm saying that's what it's there for people who make content creation and they do walk through gameplays and playthroughs that's what the stuff is there for yes they want to show the world and yes they want to do that but it's also for the people who play games and be like okay i'm stuck is it on youtube can i see if somebody got stuck here that's all that is like because before we had youtube we had forums we have forums, so you you a search online, game facts in other websites to be like, okay, uh, does somebody describe how to beat this at this part? And are you talking to people on the forums that you typing? Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm stuck right here. Then they telling you what items to get, what you maybe need to do, not do. Like, come on, man, I'm a real gamer, man. Been out here for a long time. I've been out here on these internet streets for a long time, long time. But uh, let's go ahead and move on. We got one more thing in level one news. So let's get to it. Am I screened up? Yes, I am. Headline reads, Apple's virtual reality XR headset could have face ID like tech, like tech to make payments using eyes. Now, yes, you heard that right. Once again, Apple's virtual reality XR headset could have face ID like tech to make payments using eyes. Meaning when you put on a headset, a virtual reality headset, you can make payments and purchases with your eyeballs. Hold up. Hey. I would take this as a rumor and not necessarily a fact because we don't know and it's not here yet. But if this comes to pass and happen, which a lot of things are going to, um, I mean, hey, I, I tried to warn y'all. And when I tried to warn y'all, I gave it to y'all vaguely. In Theorycraft, that was the vague version. <laughs> like, that was just 25, 30 minutes of me being vague. I cited some stuff that, okay, we, you know, just to make it make sense. Because like I said. I'm going to start losing followers, start losing people. And sure enough, somebody left. They was like, oh, yeah, no, nah, bro, talking crazy. I got to go. You know what I'm saying? They was like, oh, no, nah, he on that Kanye top of time. But see, I'm not Kanye. I'm going to say what I say. I'm going to say what I say. These people out here performing all kinds of rituals and dark arts just to keep me down. And they to use families and friends to try to keep me down and all that. And I'm still here talking this shit. So, excuse the language for the sensitive ears. But... Yeah, you ain't about to stop nothing. You ain't going to stop nothing. And I'm not going to be your martyr either. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the article here. Seems like Apple is a, is upping the ante in the mixed reality competition by offering iris scanning technology as the tech giant's forthcoming XR device will include sensors that work like Face ID in iPhones and iPads. 
The outlet reported that the information has has shared the news regarding the new technology called Iris ID, which would enable users to log in their accounts and make payments biometrically. The headset also reportedly has more than 10 cameras and might have the same M2 chip as the one powering the latest MacBook Air. Wow. This this news comes after earlier this week, Meta unveiled its high-end VR headset, the Quest Pro, at Meta Connect 2022. The Quest Pro, which is selling for $1,500 USD, is marketed towards businesses as a solution to hybrid work and virtual collaboration. As reported, it comes with advanced eye tracking capabilities for a realistic virtual experience and full color pass through technology so users can superimpose virtual features over their real world settings. So, um, yeah, man, I, I just want to tap on and touch on this real quick because, you know, we, we talk about tech over here and, um, this would be a part of the ready the ready player one era but um i was i was listening and watching a video the other day and they were talking about how the vr headsets and stuff are you know they are what they are but as far as popularity and everybody on it as a wave in a like i just said popularity everybody's not on it yet you know everybody's not on it yet Everybody's not into it yet. It's not the the next it thing. You know, everybody not going to get it like the new iPhone. So that's one thing, right, to where a lot of, because, you know, it's it's a majority rules thing. You know, once you see one person running, two people running, three people running, you might start to think to run two or what's going on. And then you'll see three more people running. You're like, okay, I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's just the whole thing. And I think it was important and cool to touch on this because, um, well, virtual reality, man. Um, there's been a lot of news going on with things that do and don't have to go with uh, virtual reality and talk about it. And 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 it all kinds of wraps up into itself, into what we're and how we're going to be living and future people are going to be living in the future in the next 5, 10, 15 years as we go. Like things are going to happen as we go and whether you catch it or not in real time is going to be up to you. So when it comes to virtual reality, I mean, listen, it was, it was also just reported not too long ago that for the second Meta, uh, Decentraland Metaverse concert, you know, Ozzy Osbourne and all other kinds of people was going to be playing in the Metaverse. So, you know, is this is where we going, man. Right, once again, this is where we going and this is going to be the second era with the technology that we're going to be living in and sooner or later, they're going to make it happen and, or this is what it's going to be. And the transition is seeming as of right now in real time, seeming to be slower than a box of rocks. Now, as far as having 10 cameras in the VR thing, that's crazy. You will have 10 cameras in there. Iris scanning. I can make payments with my eyeballs. So how, so I'm wondering how does that work? make payments with my eyeballs. So if I squint, does that mean I'm thinking about it? Like if I squint, do it, do that mean I put it in the cart? Like, I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, I'm just trying to figure out the facial expression with the eyes. Do we got to do? Hold up. Do I got to squint and put it in the cart? Do I got to make my eyes super wide and bug eye like Amanda Seyfried? And then just, I know y'all like, oh, you wrong, bro. Hold up. Do I got to do that to buy it? Like, like, how is this going to work? I'm really interested in this technology. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I thought that was real interesting, you know, real interesting. And that's going to do it for level one news. Yes, level one news, 40 minutes long. You got to love it, man. I'm the only one that give it to you like this. Long, strong, and hard. Yeah, you laughing, but your girl don't want to talk about. Hold up. Yeah. Yeah. See, you don't even know what them conversations was like. You don't even know what them conversations was like. She was sitting there telling me she was about to send you over here. Listen, get it. I think you'd be more comfortable over at that place. Weenie Hut Juniors? Are you saying I belong at Weenie Hut Juniors? Uh, oh, no. Sorry. I was actually pointing to the place next to it. Super Weenie Hut Juniors. 
Yeah. yeah. She was yeah, like, I'm, I'm about, about to send, send that, that boy to Weenie Hut Jr. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, man, with, that, with all the plan aside, aside let's, let's go, go ahead, ahead and get into, into level two news, the main topic. So, in the main topic, this is something I had to kind of pull up a little bit of research on. And, um, you know, we, we talk about it because things have been happening. And I got to thinking, are mobile games really popping like that? Like, I like and just to give some backstory for the new people here, you know, I, I, I had, a, you know, it's been ups and downs in life. You know what I'm saying? So, years ago, years ago, you know, and, and throughout my life. I haven't, I've been playing mostly mobile, right? But I've been playing Pokemon ROM hacks and stuff like that up until a certain point. And then, you know, I'll be back to consoles. But I've always had PlayStations, never owned the Xbox, had Segas, had Nintendos, the whole nine, right? Had everything, been playing games. But real life is real life. So when I'm going through what I'm going through and doing what I'm doing, I wasn't playing games. You know, and if I did play a game, I downloaded it off the Google Play Store. Or, like I said, Pokemon ROM hack. So it's either the real Pokemon Emerald or a fan game, a ROM hack, something. Now, I never thought about mobile gaming being just top tier or just the most popular form of gaming or even genre of gaming. Until, you know, recently. And I was like, is it? So let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, that, was the, that was the wrong button. Am I screened up? Yeah, I'm screened up. So, um... You know what I'm saying? Came across this article right here, and the headline reads, Microsoft is building an Xbox mobile gaming store to take on Apple and Google. And this is what got me thinking about it, because I was just like, oh, man, like, is this really what it is? So going to this tab over here for everybody on the audio, on the audio version and or having the audio experience, you can't see this, so I will read it. I went on Google, and I asked, do gamers play on PC, console, or mobile more? That's literally what I asked. Y'all may or may not see it on the visual form because I'm blocking it, but it is what it is. And it came up with this. A new report from reputable games and esports analytics firm Nuzu reveals that mobile gaming revenue will have taken over 50% of the global games market in 2018. This means that for the first time, Mobile gaming revenue has beaten both PC and console gaming combined. I was sitting there like, what? That's insane. Hold up. That's insane. And I, and I was just like, that's nuts, bruh. I was like, that's completely nuts. Mobile gaming is really popping like that. So let's go ahead and get into this article, man, with Microsoft building their own stuff. You know, oh, well, actually, before we before we get to that, right, 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 right. So, you know, more than PC and consoles combined, right? I almost messed up the flow of things. I almost got ahead of myself. So I found this other article, right? And there's projections of the mobile gaming market. So the headline, let's get into it, right? Headline reads, mobile gaming market to exceed... $175 billion by 2027 is basically 2023 and I'm living in 2025. So to me personally, this is in about like two years or less. <laughs> I know y'all like this man is really cracked out. He's our champion. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. So let's get into the article here. A new study reported forecast that the mobile gaming industry will reach $175.3 billion by 2027. This represents a growth of almost $100 billion from 2020, when the industry was worth an estimated $79.8 billion. Should this forecast prove to be accurate, the industry would grow at an average compound annual growth rate 
of 11.9% over the 2020 to 2027 period. Smartphones are projected to reach $151.9 billion at an average of 12.5%. Taking the normalization of the market into account, other devices are projected to see a growth of 8.6% for the next seven year period. The mobile gaming industry is projected to continue its strong growth in China with the forecast market size of $39.2 billion in 2027 with the average of 14.8% from 2020 to 2027. Japan, Canada, and Germany also identified as countries where the market is projected to see strong growth with respective growth increases of 7.7, 10.1, and 9.5%. So just right there, man, it's being reported that there is a lot of upside to mobile gaming. And I'm just sitting here with my mind blue. I'm like, yo, this can't be real. But it's seeming to be so. When you think about it, a lot of the, a lot of popular games these days are mobile or they were made from mobile and PC, but everybody was on mobile. You know, they transfer they uh they data and they saves and stuff from mobile to PC. Genshin Impact is a is a prime example of this. I don't know if Genshin Impact started off as mobile first, but nonetheless, mobile to PC, look how big Genshin Impact is. And it's a gotcha game. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of gotcha games are mobile. So this is just what I'm saying. And, and, it, and I'm like, man. And then it started hitting me. I was like, maybe, I was like, maybe it is popping. Genshin Impact. Final Fantasy, Dissidia, Opera Amina, Kingdom Hearts, Union Cross. Like these was these are some popular games, even though Union Cross is no more. Hell, even Dark Road ain't no more. But these were very popular games. And these are just examples as well. So with Genshin Impact being the biggest example I said in the current one, I mean, dude, I, I'm not surprised. And I and let's not and let's not forget to to count PUBG Mobile, Fortnite Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile. They got esports tournaments and all of that. Uh, all them uh, shooting games on mobile popping off right now. So this is a very interesting area in gaming. And I think I'm going to get into it. I mean, and I think that's just what it is for me is just from a life perspective personally, because I've kind of always been on the go. I, I never, I don't have... A period of time for stability, right? I, I, for the past ten years of my life, I never lived in one place for five years. I never have. As much as I want to in life, I don't think it's ever gonna happen anymore. So, and when I say one place, I'm not talking about the state or the providence. I'm talking about like the city. Like I've just never lived in a city for five years. Like from eighteen to now. I've never lived in the same place like like and then, and I got to break this down to y'all. Right. Like, OK, from 18 to. OK, I lived in the same city for five years, but I'm talking about like the same apartment for five years. <laughs> like I've never stayed in the same apartment and or house for five years in the same city. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. And for me, that presents a problem because now I'm continually anticipating I'm gonna have to move 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 so now I can't focus on console or even PC gaming as much as I want because I'm constantly moving I'm always moving I don't have stability now whether that's my fault or not it don't effing matter because the fact that matter is it just don't exist so until I get that to exist PC gaming and console gaming is just to the wayside but I got a phone I got a tablet Shoot, I can mobile game all day. You know what I'm saying? I can mobile game all day. Buy me a um excuse me, I burped. I could buy me a um a what's it face? You know the mobile controllers and turn my phone into a Nintendo Switch. I could do all that and play Call of Duty and all I could do all of that and be perfectly fine, you know what I'm saying? And just do it on the go. And and I'm just so conditioned for that, you know, it's just like, man, maybe just mobile is the way to go for me, and that's just what it is. So you know, well, let's go ahead and get to this article some more. The growth is in line with previous projections by previous reports. 
forecasting a period of exponential growth between 2020 and 2029. And these reports were apparently back in July. Okay. EA predicted in August that the mobile industry will see a 48% boom in the next fiscal year. And other reports released in May projected that the mobile gaming's revenue will make up 60% of the gaming market in 2022. Wow. Okay, so yeah, I'm going mobile. <laughs> I'm going mobile. Hold up. The God is going mobile, you dig me? The God is going mobile. They getting big money over there. The mobile market going crazy. They getting big money. Man, new bill, new money, new bill, new bill. They going crazy over there. That's crazy, right? So I had to get into this stuff, man. And I was like, well, hold on. And what got me into this, if I didn't say so already, was what we're about to get into right now. So if you're in the visual, if you have a visual experience, you see it on the screen. And I'm going to read it for all my, for all my people in the audio. Microsoft, excuse me, headline reads, Microsoft is building an Xbox mobile gaming store to take on Apple and Google. So this is what spawned off this whole research thing and me just having to like really deep dive into this and be like, oh, snap, it really is. And then, you know, we got the idea and we and the facts are presented. Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, Fortnite, PUBG. It's been in my face the whole time. And I'm just like, wow. You know, and I was like, you know, let's bring, let me bring this light to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of us grew up with consoles and I, and I grew up with mainly consoles. Right. But then it's like, I didn't have as many consoles as I didn't have handhelds almost. See, I didn't have about seven to eight Game Boys from the Game Boy Color to the Game Boy Advance and that Game Boy SP. About a total of seven to eight, maybe even 10. I'm a mo I'm a gamer, bro. Like I am the gamer. So I've mobile gamed in my life just as much as I've console gamed. Console gaming might edge out mobile gaming by a small margin if I had to put it down in, into percentages. But I mean, dude, I get and I get it, man. Like mobile, it makes sense, you know, because you, if you look at it from an economic standpoint, it makes sense. If you look at what types of games been more popular over the few years, it makes sense. If you look at the, the uh, point of entry for a lot of these games, it makes sense. Like a lot of is different these days. It's different these days. Hell, the people even these days is different. So a lot of people nowadays, like probably not even sitting at home playing the game no more. Everybody's scratching out. It's a recession. You know what I'm saying? Everybody tripping. You know what I'm talking about? So everybody like, I want to play the game. I want some money. I'm broke, but they ain't going to hire me. Trust me, they ain't going to hire me either, bro. I ain't even worried about it. <laughs> but um, let's go ahead and get into this article, man. Let's see what they talking about over there at Microsoft. Microsoft is building an Xbox mobile store to directly offer games on mobile devices, challenging Apple and Google. The software giant first hinted at a quote-unquote next-generation store it would quote-unquote build for games earlier this year, but has now quietly revealed details of the plans and filings with the UK's Competition and Markets Authority. Damn, so we is going to talk about this dango shit. Well, the thing is, it's... um. Yeah, did this did come up when, you know, talking about this Activision Blizzard acquisition, it did come up and that they're going to do it on the, uh, they're going to make like a mobile store. So, I mean, this is cool. I think this is cool for Xbox to get into it. I mean, you know, Netflix is getting into it. They got the games. They're going to be in the mobile game for show. Um, what's them boys? What's them good people, man? They've been swiping up everything going the low. I forgot their names. What's them good people, man? They bought THQ Nordic. Dang it. What is the people's name? All right, man. I forgot them people's name. But they're going to be in the mobile gaming market too. And um, and yeah, man, when it comes to the mobile gaming market, I mean, Microsoft Microsoft seemed like they just late to the party, man. You you going up against Apple and Google, bro. Jeez. Like, you, you late to the party, bro. You should have stayed over there at Winnie Hunt Jr., man. Should have just stayed at Winnie Hunt Jr. That's me cracking my knuckles. Anyway, um... Let's continue on here. The CMA is currently investigating the $68.7 billion acquisition. 
I keep telling y'all that number keep going down. Why do that number keep going down? Last time I read it, it was 69.4. Now it's 68.7. Hold up. How come every article that talk about this, the number get lower? Hmm. In its filings, Microsoft says a big motivation for the purchase is to help build out its mobile gaming presence. Its plans for this space apparently include creating an Xbox mobile gaming platform and store. Here's what the company says in the filings. So let's go down. Here's the quote. The transaction will improve Microsoft's ability to create a next generation game store, which operates across a range of devices, including mobile, as a result of the addition of Activision Blizzard's content. Building on Activision Blizzard's existing communities of gamers, Xbox will seek to scale the Xbox store to mobile, attracting gamers to a new Xbox mobile platform. Shifting consumers away from the Google Play Store and App Store on mobile devices will, however, require a major shift in consumer behavior. Microsoft hopes that by offering well-known and popular content, gamers will be more inclined to try something new. Hold up. Now, what did I tell y'all about this whole deal? I told y'all when it comes to Call of Duty and the Call of Duty player base, I don't think they can do it. And they highlighted why. Consumer behavior. Let's look at consumer behavior, shall we? Is it the people who grew up playing video games on consoles? Or is it the newer born people like Gen Z, Gen Alpha, who play mobile games? Like you, like you're gonna have to get the demographics. And these companies, Google, Microsoft, Sony, they have that data. So with the numbers and the everything we just read previously, you it makes no it's a it's a no-brainer that Xbox needs to get in on this. However, they're probably not going to be leading in this either because, well, you're just late to the game, bro. Like you just you just lagging behind. Xbox always been lagging behind. In the video game space, in the industry, Microsoft always been lagging behind when they come to video games. They just always been doing it. No if, ands, buts about it. They always been lagging behind. So let's just keep on into the article. Let's just keep going with the article, right? Call of Duty Mobile and Candy Crush Saga, Saga are two hugely popular mobile games published by Activision and King. And Microsoft could leverage these titles to help build out a game store to rival Google Play in the App Store. Given Apple's policies blocking third-party app stores on iOS, it's difficult to imagine Microsoft competing on iPhones anytime soon. But that's clearly not stopping it from envisioning an Xbox mobile app store. Okay, right? This this is crazy. This this is crazy for sure. Let's keep on with this article. Microsoft's, Microsoft's acknowledgement of a mobile gaming push comes as the company's increasingly positions Xbox Cloud Gaming as an option for mobile gaming on emerging handhelds. Microsoft was quick to support Xbox Cloud Gaming on Valve's Steam Deck, followed by a partnership with Logitech and Razer for their cloud gaming-focused handhelds. That means a push into mobile gaming could happen on multiple fronts, not just on phones and tablets. I'm going to stop right there. That's where X, that's that's where Microsoft is going to live, and that's how they're going to make it. Because of the um, the policies with Apple, right? That's, this is where they're going to make it. And I know we kind of get into real business talk, but hey, what's the slogan of the show? And a little bit of everything else. Say it with me. The show where we talk about video game news, tech news, and a little bit of everything else. Hold up. Yeah, I dig me. So that's where they're going to live, right? That's, that's where they're going to live. Because Google has the Google Play Store. And if you go to my video, I have a video on my channel. On the YouTube channel, because I know most people going to go to YouTube channel. Y'all not going to go to the Odyssey. Y'all not going to support me. Y'all fake. <laughs> anyway, um, I love y'all, man. I be joking with y'all. Y'all know how we joke. We be joking. You know how we be joking, man. You know we be joking. You know how we get down. I was just on the phone with you the other day. You know what we was talking about. You know what we was talking about. Don't don't tell your girl what we was talking about. I know she tapping you right now like, hey, man. 
hey man, what was y'all talking about? Tell me what y'all was talking about. Don't tell her. Don't tell her. If you float the other way, don't tell your boyfriend. Don't tell your boyfriend. Look, tell that person to go to here. Listen, kid. I think you'd be more comfortable over at that place. Weenie Hut Juniors? Are you saying I belong at Weenie Hut Juniors? Uh, oh no, sorry. I was actually pointing to the place next to it. Super Weenie Hut Juniors. Yeah, tell them to go to Weenie Hut Junior. All right. Now, back to the matter at hand. If you go on my YouTube channel or the Odyssey page, there's a video I made called The Biggest Slap to Gamers in 2022. Everybody says Stadia is dead. Oh, it's dead. Yes, Stadia is dead. It's dying. Yes, we know. You ain't got to rub it in. But the technology is not, right? What they're essentially doing from what it looks like, they are using the technology for mobile games and developers and games on the Google Play Store and just mobile. They're shifting it to mobile. So how is it going to work? Well, it's yet to be seen and I will be covering it and experiencing it once they put it out and flush it out in full force. So with that being said, Xbox is going to have it hard. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to have to have these partnerships with Valve and Logitech and Razer if they're going to compete. Now, a lot of people say, oh, Sony not playing fair. All right, what you going to say now? Google ain't playing fair because they got the best mobile gaming technology of all time. What excuse is it going to be next? Oh, oh, Nintendo ain't playing fair. They always had mobiles. They had Game Boys. They had this. They had that. Like, like, what, like what is it going to be? What is it going to be? You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand something. Now, let's go on to Microsoft, right? Here's the Microsoft website. And they say, and this what you can see for everybody on having an audio experience. You can't see this, but I am going to read it for you. This says the benefits of of the benefits of Xbox plus Activision Blizzard. Right. So this is essentially the benefit of the deal. And I'm going to read it. Benefits for players. More games on more devices, including Xbox, PlayStation, phones, and online. Hold up. Well, we know that's a lie. It ain't going to be on no PlayStation. It, it, next, it says choice in how and where people buy games with subscription and one off purchase options. For the 95% of gamers who play on phones, alternatives to gaming offerings from the dominant mobile platforms. Once again, for the 95% of gamers who play on phones, alternatives to gaming offerings from the dominant mobile platforms. That right there should just let you know that it's going mobile, baby. It's going mobile. Now, um, I don't know about that 95% number. I don't know if 95, uh, well, you know, that might, well, yeah, they, they're going mobile. They're, they're, they're just going mobile for the 95% of people who do play games. So, uh, games on mobile. Yeah. At Microsoft, they're coming for you. Like all, you know, all 95% of y'all Microsoft coming for y'all. They want y'all to play that Xbox. They want y'all to play the Xbox related Xbox service. They want you to play it on their platform, which ain't nothing wrong with that. Whatever floats your boat. If you like it, I love it personally. So, it is what it is. The next column reads benefits for game creators. More ways to get games in front of more players through support, investment and better access to gamers. Better revenue and fair marketplace rules through our app store principles. Greater flexibility in payment systems and the experience they provide their fans. So I would guess this would be the developers and stuff like that which is cool. And this is a big issue as well, or it's a very important topic when it comes to mobile and uh, the subscription service games, because it's shifting and changing the business, the business model and how these big time and small time developers are getting paid. So now instead of the regular standard business practice is switching to something else, which isn't or is bad. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the whole point of you know, like what, what's the piece of the pie now? Because you're going to have people who don't buy the game 
individually anymore and they just pay for the access to games so this is what the subscription services are same thing with hulu netflix and all of this and you already know i went through all of this you get access to it you don't own anything so the moment you stop paying for your netflix and your hulu you can't watch nothing because you couldn't download it in the first place they're only giving you access to watch it now same thing here Oh, I got Game Pass. Right. You pay $20 a month for Game Pass and you don't own shit on top of your games, leaving Game Pass every month. Hold up. Hey. I'll pass personally. I'm not going to do it. And the last column reads benefits for the gaming industry. More competition in mobile where a couple of big players dominate. Greater competition in traditional gaming where Sony and Nintendo will remain the biggest. Emphasis on positive workplace culture and increased local investment from Microsoft and studios and creative ecosystems around the world. Now, as far as the mobile side of things, I think this would hold up. But as far as everywhere else, nah, I don't, I don't know about that. I just, I just don't know about that. I don't know about that. You know, one time, my bad. Two times, all right, this on purpose. I don't, hey, if you listen to this show, don't go for the third time. The one time, all right, it is what it is. The second time, they meant that shit, all right? <laughs> I just want to put that out there. They meant that if it happened the second time. We don't do third times. We ain't playing out here. Chop them off at the knees. We ain't playing. So, um, yeah, man, Microsoft, they getting into the mobile space. And I think it's cool, you know, it adds a lot of more variety and things like that. There's always going to be a variety. But kind of like I said with Google having like the whole future monopoly as far as uh, having the Stadia tech and having that tech and me thinking and, or they should license it out. What the hell is that? My bad. It was some big noise in the back. But um, yeah, man, um, you know, it's the same thing here. You know, like I said previously. Microsoft is just always lagging behind. They even know it. This is on news.microsoft.com. They even know it. Nintendo and Sony and Sony will remain the biggest competitors. Like it's it's nothing they can do. It's nothing they can do. They they can't win. They just can't. It's nothing they can do. Yes, they're going to profit no matter what because just from day one, it's always been Sony versus. My, uh, versus Microsoft as far as the PlayStation and the Xbox is concerned, as far as the fandom is concerned, Sony boys first, Xbox boys, and this, that, and the third. It's always going to be that. It's always forever going to be that. But the reality of it is Microsoft is forever going to lose. The cloud won console wars, and it is what it is. So, you know, uh, when it's all said and done, man, you know, it's uh, it's crazy because... Mobile gaming is projected to do a lot more numbers, which mean which means it's only going to get more popular. And soon enough, we're all going to become mobile gamers. Um, well, we're we're not all going to become mobile gamers, but I mean everything is becoming capitalistic out as far as like content creation goes, and just what something is. You know what I'm saying, and um. You know, it's just, it's so much I can go into. And there's a lot of different ways that I could potentially take this, right? And it's like, I don't want to go left or right in this sense because I understand what's going on. So just to blatantly put it, mobile gaming is probably going to be at the forefront of gaming and start being advertised as so, if it's not already. And yeah, that's what it's going to be. People are going to start doing mobile game content more. You're going to probably start seeing that more. Um, shoot, the mobile game tournaments at some point might start being worth more than the actual PC and console tournaments. And just based on how the economy been and how the world going right now, I mean, when it comes to video game as a form of entertainment, I think people are just going to adjust to being on the go because you have the quality of life changing, you have the prices changing, the economy is changing. So with the economy changing, the people have to change and adapt. You got people spending more money, people spending less money. People wasting more time, people not wasting more time. 
it's so many different things. And I know I'm talking about everything vaguely, but it's only vaguely because it's yet to happen. With this particular topic with mobile gaming, the future has yet to happen. It hasn't played out yet. So because we have we we're, we're not at the point where okay, oh this mobile game is the number one game of all time, or it's the number one game right now, most downloaded game ever. We not there yet. You know what I'm saying? We not there. You know, so I just, I, I honestly can't wait till we get there to see what it is. And like I said, your boy is going mobile. Your boy is going mobile. He going mobile. I'm going global and mobile, baby. That's what it is. I'm going global and mobile. And I know y'all be thinking I be talking that bibble babble. Hey, but guess what? All right, man. When it all blows up in your face, I don't want to hear about it. When it blow up in your face. All right. When it blow up in your face. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. When it, I'm, I'm going to literally say the exact sound bite. I'm going to literally say the exact sound bite. And I'm going to just go, all right, man. When it all blow up in your face. That's all it's going to be. That's exactly what it's going to be. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be it for this episode of the Gamers Den. Appreciate any and everybody who made it to the end. You did what I'm saying. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Make sure you rate this five stars if you think this was five stars. And just shout out to you once again for sticking around and tapping into the show. I appreciate you. Once again, I'm going global and I'm going mobile. All right. Um, you can catch this show every Tuesday every Thursday on Rumble and Hideout for the visual for the visual experience. Same as the audio experience. They always go up every Tuesday and Thursday. They hit all the platforms every Tuesday and Thursday. So from midnight to midnight on two hey look, it's up. It's it's gonna be up there. So we up there. Um you know what I'm saying? The occasional Odyssey YouTube uploads as well. You know, once again, hit the links in the description, links in the bio, all of that. All the avenues for you to monetarily support are there and available for you. Uh, on the visual platform, there's the the, uh, the Venmo QR code and stuff like that. I know y'all wondering what song is it that we got today? And the song for this particular episode. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Because we got an ad, so I ain't going to let the ad, you know, I got to let the ad play. But, um, yeah, man, we got that new Fawny. That's what we got. We got that new Fawny, man. We got a new Fawny. Can't let him. So as soon as this ad is over, we're going to play it. Uh, okay, 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 we on, we on. So shout out to everybody. Appreciate everybody tapping in, man. I'm going to catch y'all next time. We got Can't Let Him by Thousand Band Fawny. Gone. Uh, yeah. I can't let them get the best of me. They try to take advantage. Walk hard at my recipe. They try to, uh, yeah, yeah. Can't let them get the best of me. They try to take advantage. Yeah, walk hard at my recipe. My lips start to get damaged. My lips start to get damaged. Walk hard at my recipe. My lips start to get damaged. <laughs> For real, I'm gonna keep going with it. And another one too. Sorry, on the way. Uh, hey, hey, can't let them get the best of me. They try to take advantage. Walk hard at my recipe. My lips start to get damaged. Fool niggas try finesse me, but yeah, I still have manage. No, I ain't home. Can't show no panic. I can't hide no squares in a circle. Goofy niggas too random. Fucking this thought who dumb me back then. Now she's saying nigga handsome. Passing on labels who slept on me back then. Now they get no answer. Can't let them get the best of me. They'll try to take advantage. Walk hard, that's my rest. Be in my lips, start to get damaged. Can't let them get the best of me. They'll try to take advantage. Walk hard, in my rest. Be my lips, start to feel damaged. Niggas be trying to throw shade on me and throw me under the bus. Niggas be trying to parlay with me. To pick up my crumbs Definite answer, no maybes, please I need to know what you want Don't ever try to persuade my team These niggas too wild with the drones Left LA to the A Just to get back to the
fam. Got butt for the show, better pay. If I don't, then you gon' get jammed. Had static on beef for room. Had an air mouth, then give a damn. Niggas be talking about all this bad ass beef, I still give a damn. Can't let them get the best of me, they try to take advantage. Yeah, walk hard in my rest, beat my lips, start to get damaged. Walk hard in my rest, beat my lips, start to get damaged. Can't let them get the best of me, they try to take advantage, yeah. Walk hard in my rest, beat my lips, start to get damaged. Can't let them get the best of me, they try to take advantage, yeah. Walk hard in my rest, beat my lips, start to get damaged. My lips, start to get damaged. Walk hard in my rest, beat my lips, start to get damaged. My lips, start to get damaged. Walk hard in my rest, beat my lips, start to get damaged.